and welcome my name is rusty and welcome to me channel this is um, my music uh, heavy metal mostly and horror movie channel where I discuss me favorite movies or movies in general and um, my music and tonight I want to talk about I feel naked I want to talk about a movie called Harpoon, and um, it was uh, released in 2019, and it is a movie that, it has the prestige, I guess, if you want to call it that, it has the prestige of being the very first movie ever that I bought digitally. Now, if you're new to the channel or if you've been around, you know that I am a physical media person. I do not do digital stuff. I don't buy digital music. I don't buy digital shows or, or um, stuff like that. I don't like it. And I had heard a lot about this from a couple of friends whom I trust their opinion on. And they told me how great it was. So I, as usual, I looked it up on International Movie Database. It's got a really high score for a horror movie. And Rotten Tomatoes has it at like 98% or something. It's like ridiculous for a horror movie. So after reading the synopsis and, you know, uh, checking out the trailer and stuff like that, and of course word of mouth, I really, really, really wanted to see this movie and knew I would probably want to own it. So I went to eBay, which is where I usually buy all of my movies. Um usually a new or like new condition and the lowest that I could find it was like 20 bucks and I'm like well I mean I know it's kind of new it's 2019 but I'm not paying 20 bucks for one movie you know I have paid 20 bucks 25 bucks for like a special edition My Bloody Valentine or um, another one was Just Before Dawn the Blu-ray Scream Factory thing because they're always so rip off um, but I have paid that much money for a movie, but I'm not just going to, I'm not going to pay that much money for just a regular movie. Now I could rent it, but you know, everybody's different. You do you, I do me. <laughs> so, um, I didn't know what to do really. I don't like renting stuff, but I do have a Voodoo account and a Movies Anywhere account because... I've got 1,500 movies, and as you can imagine, a great deal of them came with digital copies, and I'm not going to just throw them away. So I made an account with me brother, and um, we share the account where I can put all of the digital copies that come in the movies, and then my brother and sister-in-law can watch them, and vice versa, um, if they put something on there that I don't have. Or might want to check out so I went to my voodoo account and they had it on voodoo this harpoon and uh, it was on sale it's only $4.99 $2.99 to rent $4.99 to own and HDX so I'm like well at least I will own it kinda which is the way I think of digital stuff you know you kinda own it um, anything can happen at any time and there you go that's why I like you know digital I mean that's why I like physical media but anyway I bought it uh, it's the first digital movie that I ever bought and I only bought it because getting a DVD or blu-ray copy the cheapest that I found was like 20 bucks I'm just not going to do that for a movie but I really wanted to see it so that's what I did so it has the prestige of being my first ever digitally bought and owned movie that I do not have a physical copy of. And I feel weird not being able to hold up the Blu-ray. It kind of sucks, but let's go ahead. <laughs> so if you read the synopsis, it's rivalries, dark secrets, and sexual tension emerge when three best friends find themselves stranded on a yacht in the middle of the ocean desperate for survival okay so um and it's listed as a comedy horror and i would say that the first 30 minutes um 
first 30 45 minutes does have a lot of little comedy elements but it's mixed with a lot of tension so it's it's okay i mean i don't really like comedy horrors but if they're good like zombie land or something like that i'm okay with um, the occasional comedy horror this however i really don't know if i would categorize it as a comedy horror there is comedy elements to it but those fade after about 45 minutes and the movie is brutal you understand me brutal so this movie was directed by rob grant written by rob grant and mike kovac and it stars monroe chambers chris gray and emily tyra i didn't check to see what else they've been i don't recognize those names but they are phenomenal so um yeah so how do you do this okay um the movie is one of those one location movies however we do start in town we are introduced to the characters and that is uh jonah richard and sasha okay now richard and sasha are boyfriend and girlfriend and jonah is their best friend but together, all three of them are like this little tight pack. Now, Richard is extremely rich. Like, they even show, in one of the comedy segments, they show his bank account. He's got like $900,000 in it. He's a rich boy. Jonah's poor as dirt. And Sasha is just like, you know, you know, I guess middle class, lower middle class. But she's his boyfriend, so, you know, Richard's boyfriend. So, there you go. So... The first thing that happens as the story gets, you know, begins is you see Richard having a tantrum. Now, these are three extremely toxic people, and they are in an extremely toxic relationship. And that is what this movie is about. It's basically about three friends who are toxic themselves and are involved in a toxic relationship. Their friendship is toxic. You know, Richard and Sasha's relationship is toxic. They're just three toxic people. And the truth is, none of them have any other friends. They are like these three little toxic people that are best friends, but are yet very, very bad for each other, as we will discover. So, once you have that uh, part set up, um, the first thing that occurs is you see Richard throwing, uh, he's got a serious anger issue problem, and he is throwing an absolute fit in his Jeep uh, because of something you're not quite aware of. He arrives at Jonah's apartment where he proceeds to beat the absolute shit out of him. I'm talking, we're not talking sock him upside the face and bitch at him for a second. We're talking about jumping on them like a commando, black, bloody, blue. You know, he beats the absolute shit out of this guy. This is best friend. Next thing you know, the girlfriend, she arrives, Richard's girlfriend arrives, and um, screams at him to get off of Jonah, and um, it all comes out. You know, like, what are you doing this for? What is this about? And... He's like, you know, the typical jealous boyfriend thing. He's doing that. My two best friends are sleeping with each other. So she starts um, going, oh, my God. So she proceeds to inform Richard that the little piece of conversation that he saw on her phone was them discussing his Christmas present. I mean, his birthday present. It's his birthday. So they were, what they were discussing was his birthday present, and he got it. So he feels really bad, and she even like comes out and just throws the present to him, which is, uh, they call it a harpoon, which is part of the comedy thing, because every time someone calls it a harpoon, one of the others corrects them that it's a spear gun. And that is what it is, it's a spear gun. But um, they keep calling it a harpoon. So uh, she goes ahead and gives it to him as proof. You know, it's like, see what you've done, you know. So he, in his toxic way, feels very bad that he has uh, accused his girlfriend of cheating with his best friend. 
and has just beat the absolute shit out of his best friend. So he's going to make it all up to them by going on a trip, um, you know, just the three of them, out on a yacht, his yacht, excuse me, his daddy's yacht, the family yacht. Um, and it's a, it's a nice yacht. It's like a, I guess maybe a 50-footer. Um, so it's, it's, it's pretty nice. But, um, so that's what they're going to do. And now that's when we end up in the second and last location. There's the apartment, then there's the yacht. Everything in this movie from beginning to end takes place on this yacht. So here they are on the yacht. As you can imagine, Jonah is still quite upset with his big black eye and his, you know, scratches and stuff. And the girlfriend's all like, you're an idiot. And Richard is all like, oh, I'm so sorry. And like I said, there's a lot of comedy going on in this 45 minutes. For instance, Jonah, you know, you know, Richard is like, what can I do to make it up for you? And Jonah's like, um, I want a free punch. That makes sense. The girlfriend agrees. And because he had accused her of sleeping with him, she wants a free punch too. So that's an actually pretty funny scene. Um, and he gets a really good lick in. And um, the girl, the girlfriend gets a really good lick in. And Richard's completely worried about his nuts you know everything anything but the nuts so that that's all kind of funny it there is comedy in it in the first 45 minutes anyway so they go on they're trying to calm down Richard's trying to make it up to him everybody is trying to be calm and once again we're dealing with some three extremely toxic people and one of the things that we find out going on about this time is that in actuality they were screwing behind his back but only one time and they're worried about him finding out and so you've got these three people out alone in a yacht uh, you know worried about these two Sasha and Jonah worrying about Richard finding out um, and yeah so the tension begins to rise because Richard can tell something's going on between them. You know, like looks and stuff like that. He's still suspicious, is what I'm saying. But then again, he has a very toxic anger management, pretty much antisocial personality disorder, which all three of them have. And... Um, he, re he, he attacks Jonah again. Like, I'm leaving stuff out. But he attacks Jonah again, beats the hell out of him again, and this time he's going to kill him. He is going to kill him with the spear gun. And I actually think he just might have done that. Um, so he is beating him again. The girlfriend, though, or, because he, he then starts, he drops the spear gun, and he's strangling him to death, right? He is, he is strangling him to death. The girlfriend knocks her boyfriend out, and like I said, now we know that the two did sleep together one time, but they weren't having an affair. So they have Richard knocked out. They know if he comes to, he's going to kill them. So these two geniuses decide, why don't we just push him over, and we can run off together. And the girl's like, well, I never said... I wanted to run off with you anyway, but but when he gets up, he's going to kill us both, and we can't do anything. Let's just go back to shore, and so they start trying to go back to shore, but the, the yacht will not start. They end up pushing Richard into the water, which wakes him up, and some more comedy, you know, it's like, hey, 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 you know, sorry, can can we figure out some way to just, like, coexist between the three of us and go back to shore so they end up letting him come back on the boat and part of that though part of them letting him come back on the boat and this is this is the one time you have to use your suspension of disbelief but he demands that all weapons of any kind anything that can be used as weapons forts spoons the, the spear gun, you know, everything be put back on it because when she, I think she was going to kill him, um, Richard, 
her boyfriend, but Jonah ends up getting shot with the harpoon. So it, it was like a really bloody violence going on here. So the comedy element is like really going to the wayside and um, they end up throwing everything on the boat away. They've thrown it all away. Now they were only supposed to go out like Gilligan's Island. You know, they were only going to go out for a three hour cruise. <laughs> They didn't bring any food. They didn't bring any water. They didn't bring any extra diesel. Um, they didn't fill up the boat. They were just going to go out and talk things out and try to make up, you know, for that. So all they had with them was what they brought with them. They didn't, like, stock the fridge or anything like that. So there is no food. The yacht now will not work. They can't get the yacht to crank up. They don't know why. You've got these three people who are like in very suspicious of each other. Richard's tried to kill Jonah twice. You know, the girlfriend has knocked her boyfriend out. They haven't they then admit that they slept together one time. So there is like a lot of hatred going on. A lot of hatred going on. And in the meantime, they went so far out that they're stuck out way out in the ocean um, in the Pacific so they're stuck way out in the ocean and they have no food the boat won't work so the pumps for the water and stuff won't work they didn't bring any supplies the dumb idiots have thrown everything overboard John has been shot in the hand so there's no medical equipment um, you know, like first aid kit or anything, they weren't prepared for a long trip. Now, there's probably like a week goes by while this three toxic best friends who now pretty much hate each other's guts are stuck on this boat while they are slowly starving to death and thirsting to death. They do the craziest things, like they eat a seagull, try to drink its blood. Um, and on top of everything else, Jonah's hand, where he was shot with the harpoon, or the spear gun, has become infected. And it's like, he's gone septic, blood poisoning. You can see these black lines going up his arm and stuff. Um, they know that he's going to die and you can imagine the pain that he's in and they even attempt to you know because she is a what it, oh she's a, a she's a trained nurse and she works at a nursing home as a caregiver so she's not like a hospital nurse but she is a trained nurse and the only thing that she can come up with is we've got to cut your arm off and that's a pretty horrible scene because there's nothing in there but one bottle of wine that they had found so they break the bottle after they had drank all the liquor and are going to cut his arm off with the piece of glass that doesn't work out well <laughs> and they end up stopping you know because this isn't going to work they do make a cut but it's not going to work and Jonah's not going to allow it and then here is where usually Daddy Storyteller is going to piss you off. Because we are now approaching a moment in which I am going to have to tell you that I am not going to tell you anymore. Now, why would I do something like that to you? Well, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> because... I tried to think after this movie was over, I tried to think if there was any other movie that had what this movie has at the end. Now I've seen lots of movies with OMG what the fuck twists at the end, but I've never seen one with four. Okay. I tried to think. I've seen movies with twists, and I've seen movies with multiple twists. 
but I've never seen a movie with four twists that I did not see coming. And this may explain why it's got such a high rating on Rotten Tomatoes and uh, International Movie Database for a horror movie is because what the fuck, you know, I was impressed. And I, kinda, and I knew I would like the movie from the trailer, but I'm very, very glad I bought it. Now, like I said, at the end, the final act, remember what I said. You're talking about three very toxic people. They hate each other's guts. You kind of heard the little things that have gone on between them. They should have stopped being friends, all of them, years ago. But because of their personalities, because uh, and it's kind of a personality study as well, because of their personalities being so toxic, they have no other friends, and you know why these three have remained best friends. No fucking body else will have them. Not Richard and all of his money. Not Jonah and his fine ass, because he is fine. Uh, Richard's pretty cute, too. Not Sasha, um, who is also a pretty girl. Um, but they, they literally have no friends. Um, and you kind of know why. They're all three... Their personalities are shit. And they are all each other has. So, like I said, you're, you're at the point now. They've been out there way more than a week. They are starving to death. Um, they hate each other's guts. They have been kind of hinting around for a few days that maybe one of them should sacrifice themselves so the other two can live. So they draw straws to see who is going to <laughs> be eaten. And that doesn't work out well either. And um, can you imagine being in a situation like that? I would just refuse. I mean, die with dignity, for God's sakes. You know what I'm saying? I would just be like, look, I'm not eating either one of you. I hate your guts. Especially the two guys are like hating each other's guts, right? But I'm just not going to eat you. I'm... You know, I understand the Donner Party and I understand, you know, the plane crash in the Andes and all these movies. And I understand that people do that. I understand that survival instinct can do many things to different people. But I, I can assure you that I'm not going to eat anyone. I'm, I'm just not. Yeah. But uh, so that was kind of uh, a pretty cool scene. And that's when it starts, which is why I have to stop. It's during that scene and right after that scene that the twists begin. And when I was watching it, you know, I'm like, this has been a pretty good movie. I'm very glad that I bought it. And like I said, it's on sale at Voodoo for $4.99. Um, I'm very glad that I have it and can always watch it as long as I have access, I guess. You know, and if I, but if I was to ever find a DVD or Blu-ray, I would buy this movie to have a physical copy. Um, but, yeah. During that scene, or after that scene, there is a twist that put my back in the back of this chair. You know, like... The fuck? <laughs> and I'm like... That was that was good. That was gross too. And it was good. You know, and then there is a second twist that put me right back there. And I'm like going, Oh wow, two two twists. <laughs> I didn't see that coming and hey man, I am an expert. You understand? I'm an expert with movies. I can spot shit coming a mile away. I did not see. Now, of course, I, I kind of thought that that first twist, I knew something similar was going to happen, but I really didn't know how it was going to go down. The second twist, my ass didn't see that coming at all. Third twist came, I didn't see that shit coming at all either. So, I was really blown away. Fourth, four. And I'm talking about movie-altering twists. 
the fourth and final twists, I didn't see that shit coming either. And when the movie credits started rolling, I was just like, I'm impressed <laughs> that you could pull that shit over on me four times in 20 minutes. Because, you know, the, the four twists take place in the last act, you know, the last 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes. And it'll go, wait, it, it might only be 20 minutes. It all happened pretty fast. So you've been, like, streaming along loving this movie and then it's like, bam. And then here's another one for you. Thank you, sir. May I have another? And I was really, really shocked that they could pull something like that off. And it just all come together and went whoosh, 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 whoosh. <laughs> and I was like, that is a fucking good movie. And... Um, I am glad that I had this feeling that it would be, and I am glad that I was like, you know, I don't buy digital, but I'm not paying 20 bucks for a movie but um, that, I, that I haven't even seen before. We're not talking about replacing something with a fancy collector's edition. We're talking about straight out the gate. I'm just not doing it um, on a trailer alone, uh, or even word of mouth or reviews, but uh, yeah, because you know, Indie horror, you know how I push, push, push indie horror and indie filmmaking. Unfortunately, for a lot of indie horror, when, you know when they go to do the when they do second market releasing, which is Blu-ray, DVD, and stuff, um, there is a great deal of indies that they can't afford big giant runs, I guess, of DVDs and Blu-rays. So they make small, limited runs of Blu-rays, and therefore they are, you know, they're kind of more expensive than your average, you know, bigger budget that gets a, a bigger print run. And um, so, yeah, I, I, you know, that just happens in indie horror. It's kind of their DVD and Blu-rays release, especially if the movie is good and gets good reviews, then... A lot of people want to add it to their collections uh, like I would have wanted to have this and I will continue to watch um, for a physical copy but uh, so yeah it's one of those but I just couldn't spring for 20 bucks so it's has the prestige of being a flawless movie 98% positive on Rotten Tomatoes not that I care about all that kind of stuff you know me and critics I don't care nothing about critics. But still, it's shocking to see a horror movie with such high score. Um, so, yeah. I am not going to tell you what those twists are, because you would not like me if I did. I know when to keep my mouth shut. This is a spoiler channel. 99% of everything that I say and movies that I do... Um, I tell the complete story like a little storyteller. Um, I turn movies into a campsite, you know, campfires, campsite, fireside chat, story, horror story, scary story. Um, and I tell the whole thing. But I'm not going to do that to you because I want you to experience it if you're willing to rent it or buy it. You should do that. Four excruciatingly cool, well done, did not see that coming, and I am an expert at seeing shit coming. Um, and all four of them blew me away. Not the first one, like I said. I kind of knew something was going to happen between the three of them for the first twist, but they still kept me guessing, which is good. So I knew kind of what was going to happen was going to happen but I didn't know how it was going to go down and I didn't know who it was going to go down on or how it was going to happen so they still got me but I did kind of feel that coming the other three I didn't see that shit at all that was straight out the gate darkness I did not see that coming at all so yeah um, I told you the story up to the point up to the final act 
um, because this is one of those movies you should not spoil. So I'm not going to spoil it. And I want you to, you know, if you're willing, go look at the trailer, read some reviews, don't spoil it. Oh, well, do spoil it if you want to, but that's your loss. Um, but yeah, 2019, um, the movie is called Harpoon, and it stars Monroe Chambers, Chris Gray, and Emily Tyra. And um, yeah, check it out. Go look it up. It is a fantastic independent horror film. So enjoy it. Um, and that's my review of that. Um, it wasn't a spoiler review. It was a half spoiler. I told the story all the way up to the final act. And then now you can see what I saw, which absolutely thrilled me. Uh, to have that done to me. I think that if you are a horror fan, especially a one location horror fan, um, you should really like this movie and you should really enjoy the twist that it jumps on you. So, Harpoon 2019. I don't know where else it's available, but right now you can get it $4.99 on Vudu if you have a Vudu account. I'm sure if you looked on the other services, whatever you may have, it might be there. I don't know if it's on Netflix or not. I do have Netflix. So if something comes on Netflix, I'll see it. But I'm not spending one streaming service is all I will pay for. Because uh, I got so much shit to buy. <laughs> but I appreciate your time. Love you, miss you. Bye. Harpoon 2019. Support what? Support what? Independent horror films and independent horror filmmakers and I will see you in the next one which will be I'm going to start the Resident Evil franchise in celebration of the new Resident Evil movie that's coming and I'm very excited for it so I want to go through all six Mila movies and uh, which I love and um, we're going to do that next but I had to jump in since I just watched this yesterday and I'm still recovering from the coolness of this movie. So, yes, 2019, Harpoon, pick it up if you can. And love you, miss you, bye. See you in the next one, I hope. Stay scary and keep screaming when appropriate.